Good day, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Vice Squad, brought to you by the Anadromas Fly Company. And uh, here we are. This week, we were going to uh, start, we are going to refilm uh, some of the older videos, but uh, I'm ill-prepared, and it's late in the week already, and it's only Monday. So it'll be Wednesday for you, but uh, I've been tying all sorts of these Kaufman stones anyway, so uh, I'm getting fairly okay at them. So I figured, why not? Let's tie a Kaufman stone. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a size 10. This is a long curved nymph hook. Long curved hook, anyway, from Mustad. I'll, uh, it's a C53S hook. Very similar to a uh, stimulator hook. And I've put a 1 8 gold tungsten bead on there. And for starters, we're going to use some, this is some dot white uni thread. And we're just going to run a little thread base. Try to be no bigger than your bead. You'll see why in a second. I'm gonna grab some, these are some medium brown or thereabouts. You could use dark brown, I guess. You could use black. I'm sure that the trout don't really care. But in this case, we're gonna use medium brown. So I'm gonna tie one biot in, curve side out, right on the side of the hook. They can be a little persnickety laying on there. But I like to try and get it so that it rides with the eye. I'll grab another one here and we'll tie it in on the other side. And what you want to do is make sure that these biots are the same length, more or less, just because they look better that way. We're pretty close there. So we'll put a few wraps in there. And as I get up towards the eye, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna whip finish there. Just a couple, three turns. And leave it like that. What I don't wanna do is build up a whole bunch of bulk. Um, so that the bead won't pass over it. Cause then you're going into problems. Then what we'll do is we'll push the bead up over there and then I can just see the back end of the biot, which is okay. Next what we'll do is we'll grab some, this is a mole 3 uh, lead wire. Um, before you tie these, check your regulations. I always say this, just make sure that you're allowed lead in the water you're fishing. If not, use lead free uh, or there's some other options out there. But what I'm going to do here is put... Twelve wraps. What I don't want to do is go too far back down the bend, because then it uh, sort of chews up all your room for your rear legs. I'm gonna grab an old junky pair of scissors here and trim that off. And trim that off. I always like to go and just push that. Try and make it as flat as possible. Try to. There we go. Next what we'll do is we'll grab that white uni thread again. And I'm just gonna build a little dam behind the lead, making sure it's all the way forward. And that'll help stop it from spinning. You can wind through the lead if you want. We're gonna dub over it all anyway, so we don't need to be too crazy about making this whole thing thread covered get rid of our thread and what we'll do is we'll wind it down not all the way to the back end but just past where the barb sits we'll leave our thread and what we'll do is we'll just build a little ball of thread there so that our biot will lay against that and splay out a little better once we'll grab the same medium brown or dark brown or black or whatever it is you're using by us and tie one in now you don't want to go crazy long with them I don't think they really need to be and we'll grab another one 
tie it in on the opposite side. And here again, I'll just put a couple loose wraps and make sure that our length is okay, which it seems pretty close. And when I do these, I like to pinch them tight and then they will stay where they want them to. You want them to stay right on the side of that hook so that they sit properly. And we'll just wind our thread back. When you get to the back end, you want to be gentle because it will force that bias to roll around the hook, which it is a little bit, but it's not horrible. What we'll do then is we'll tie in our ribbing material. Uh, typically you would use a D-rib, some sort of plastic rib. Uh, what I'm going to use and what I have been using is uh, Spanflex. In this case, this is Unithread uh, A+. It's quite a heavy thread and it makes a nice rib and it looks really good against the dubbing that we're going to use. And I think more to the point, the, the fact that the rib is there is more important than what it's made out of. So we'll just tie that in on the far side of the hook. That's how I clean it all up while you're there. And I'm going to leave my thread at where the lead ends here so we can start our dubbing, which we're going to use. This is a sparkle dub from Ant or Antron Sparkle Dub sorry, by Wopsy. I really love this stuff. I used it in the other stone pattern. We did both the other stone patterns we did. Uh, this is uh, Hexagenia. It's the wrong species, but it's a really good color. Uh, this is the same as we did on the depth charge stone. This, this stuff. So we'll make a nice thin noodle. Don't make it too bulky. And I'm gonna start by winding backwards. And that just enables you to have a nice small profile at the back. There's no lumps from where you're starting your dubbing because all that starts ahead. So we'll just add another little pinch here. If you want to count it out by proportions, um, it's not quite two thirds because of the bead head. Uh, with the bead head, it's maybe just a little better than half if you counted it to there. But I want to leave maybe, let's say, two bead widths behind the bead for our thorax and our wing cases. But now that we've got this here, a nice smooth body, I'm going to grab our rib. And just with some nice even wraps, make some little segments all the way up here. Tie that rib off and cut it out of there. Right. Next, what I'm going to do is grab our dubbing for the thorax, which we're going to use. This is some Arizona diamond dubbing in Calabatus again. Wrong species, but I really like the color. And it's got a bit of some longer fibers and a bit of flash in there that I think looks really good. So I'm gonna put just a little bit on and I'm just gonna cover over that spot and just back onto the body just to give myself a little bump for the first bit of wing case. And for that, we're gonna use, uh, this is some turkey feather turkey wing feather. Typically you'd use a modeled feather. Uh, I don't have any modeled feathers and don't have definitely don't have enough to to uh, do all the stones I have been tying but what I did get was just some darker turkey feathers and they got a bit of a bit of color in them so some of the wing cases get a bit of color. Some are just kind of sort of medium dark brown like this and what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've cut all these into strips off the, the feather stem and then I take a bit of uh, Sally Hansen's nail polish, clear nail polish. My wife loves shopping for nail polish with me. And uh, I've taken that on a piece of wax paper and I've laid them all out and I coat the backside 
of that feather strip with the nail polish and I let it dry and what that does is holds them all together all the fibers together really well hopefully really well at any rate I'm yammering on what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that feather and I'm going to cut a little bit of a V out of the back end of it and then you want to make sure it's facing the right way so put the non-glued side up and I'm going to lay that right on top and I'm just going to cover over that little dubbing ball that we made so I'm going to hold it with my opposite hand here and I'm just going to put a couple loose wraps and then as I move forward I'm going to cinch down from there otherwise I found that it really splays these feathers out and it'll actually split them and we'll cut that out of there and I'm going to cut another V in it and we'll set that aside for just a second and grab some more of that diamond dubbing here and we'll just dub a little onto our thread and I'm going to work just back on top of that to help it hold it down and cover up all those thread wraps and we'll grab our feather again our feather strip again with the little V in it and we'll lay that on top again and I'm going to do the same thing. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that you can see the, the bottom one a little bit. And we'll snip that out of there. And again, we'll grab some more of that dubbing. When you're doing this, what you want to do is make sure you're building this up so you've got a nice thick thorax like a stone has. So on this one, I like to put a little more dubbing than I did on the first one just to help build that front end up a little better. And again, just back onto that feather just a little bit. And we want to leave our thread enough behind the bead so that we can still tie another one more bit of feather in there. And if you've done this right, and by the time you get to the sort of the butt end of that feather, it gets wider as you go, so, which is good. And lay that on top, and it'll sort of hopefully wrap around the hook a little better than the other two did, sort of covering it all up. Put some nice tight wraps in there and you can see it's sort of stepped and we'll reach in there with our scissors and if you cut them off just piece by piece sort of it versus trying to take the whole thing it cuts out a little better you don't end up with so much bulk behind the bead Just take our thread and wind up to that and make sure that it's not stuck on top of the bead. And then finally we'll just take just another little bit of that diamond dub. Or not diamond dub, sorry. Yeah, it is diamond dubbing. The heat's getting to me. It isn't going to be too much. And what we want to do is just put a nice little collar of dubbing on there just to hide our thread wraps. Finishing your thread right behind the bead. And grab a whip finish tool. And put a couple turns in there. Like that. And you can add some head cement. If you want to use UV, I guess you could use that too. Same thing. And lastly, what I'll do is uh, take my little dubbing brush here and I'm going to brush out some of those longer fibers and just give it a little bit of bugginess and it looks like it has legs but just stroke them all to the back try not to do too much otherwise this is just going to peel right off the bottom it'll, the water will grab it and it'll just it won't sit down where you want it to it'll just float and just for the sake of argument Just 
cement those rocks. So that's a little more in depth than, than some of the flies we tie. It's, uh, I know when I first started tying them a couple months ago, it was, uh, they looked pretty intimidating just because of all the turkey feathers and everything else that goes with them. But uh, really, if you just take your time and, uh, and just take them one by one, they're uh, actually quite easy to tie in. So, but really key to, to glue them up first and then they stick together and they don't fall apart on you. But uh, at any rate, that's Kaufman stone, beadhead Kaufman stone. Can add rubber legs to the side, looks really good as well. Uh, definitely uh, a trout catcher. At any rate, if you're new to the channel, folks, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're not new to the channel, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, we really appreciate that. Uh, check out our sponsors that's the anadrama supply company you can check them out uh, all their gear on our uh, online store which is fishingoutdoors.ca for canada.net for the u.s uh customers um yeah i i really hope you enjoyed it i enjoyed tying them until next week everyone have a uh, have a cooler week because we're in the middle of a e wave here but uh take care